So welcome to the data science working group for chaos. As always, we are under the chaos code of conduct. So please be kind to each other. And be excellent to each other. <laughs> be excellent to each other. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. We have a few things on the agenda for today. The first one is, is really just kind of an open discussion. And I, I think the idea behind this is what, um, what are the questions you have that you'd like to get answers to that maybe aren't in your existing dashboards or aren't in, um, you don't have good visualizations for, but are things that you would like to see visualized that would help you understand your, uh, your open source community? And then, you know, and also a, a, along with that, maybe also how to answer those questions from a data science perspective. Uh, Callie, did I did I capture that well, or do you want to add something to that? I think you put this on the agenda. Yeah, that's pretty much what I had. Or even if there's some things that you're visual, visualizing that you haven't seen in other places that you want to highlight, different ideas, I feel like any of those threes are good discussion points. Cool. So this is just kind of an open open discussion. So I would say people should feel free to chime in. You know, from my perspective, it's, you know, it's having more tools that visualize our metrics models is would be good. Um, I think I think. Um, ways of doing comparisons between repos and dashboards are helpful, which, so those are my two thoughts. One of the things I'd like to see more of that's um, admittedly not a, not a visualization, so I'm going to answer a slightly different question. Um, but <laughs> one of the things I notice in visualizations is <laughs> one of the things you notice is when the data is not clean and having ways to clean up that data because it, it comes out in the visuals. But then in a lot of cases, like, you know, in, in Augur, for example, you have to actually go in and fix stuff in the database. If you know, you know, like merging users and things, there's not really an interface for it. But in particular, yeah. some of the some of the cleanup around around users is something that can be can be problematic. So, you know, merging, merging duplicate users or um Fixing organizational affiliations, for example. And yeah, I know that's it, something that recently Grimoire Labs has just started to implement um, with an interface from the um, from the uh, dashboard into, into Sorting Hat, where you can actually make some of those changes. Yeah, Augur ensures that you can't have a duplicate platform user ID, which is helpful and then we have a list of aliases for emails however if people have multiple github accounts we can't reconcile that and we don't have any way for for you to sort of like um there's no user interface for saying where people work so if they're not using the domain for their company which most companies they don't aren't required to then you can't tr track your own organization's uh contributors uh, as a separate list. There is a table you can manipulate to get that information in there, but there's no interface for it. Yeah. And this, um, mm -hmm. so this problem becomes more problematic, Sean, if you decide to add more platforms, which I know is something that you've talked about in the past. So yeah, if- we used to have GitLab. We just, um, we haven't had the big demand for it, but- Yeah. No. But if you decided to use Percival, for example, to add Slack or something, if you decided to mm -hmm. add some other data source, it becomes a lot more, a lot more problematic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then you have, there's no key across data sources. So, um, and the organizational affiliation data, that tends to be something that, especially for smaller communities, it tends to be something that you just know ab about your, your community members. You tend to, to, you know, if they're fairly active, you tend to know where they know where they work. And then they're also, you know, you can get that from, you can get that from GitHub, which is, I think, more reliable than getting it from the user, from the organization field. And then there are also the CNCF maintains a huge, um, I forget whether it's YAML or JSON file, which has all of the all of the details about lots of people's affiliations. So there's 
there's ways to get at this to clean up the data, but it's not really not really easy. I, I think yeah, that's that. oh, sorry, Kelly. Oh, uh, no, I just had a sh like a short comment of just say that's a big reason why I like working in Python for a lot of the data cleaning because it's a lot easier. Like you can be a lot more specific, and I found it easier to like integrate different data sources um, mm -hmm. because you can kind of like you're not like restricted in any way by the platform that you can use Python and kind of manipulate things as you need. Right. But if you're using something like eight knot, um, the, the, visual, the, the visualizations that you provide are something that I'm going to easily be able to manipulate with, with Python. They're, they're all in Python. So anything yeah. that you, so like if there's anything that we need to do on like the back end to do like identity checking or like if we're, we know in the information, we can integrate it into the Python code because that's everything that like 8 not mm -hmm. is all written in Python. So you can kind yeah. of, if you go and look at the different visualizations, you can see the data cleaning that's happening in the background to produce those visualizations. Right. But you would need to do that. I, I can't do it for my, for my data if I use your, um, Sorry, if I use, if I, I'm not explaining this very well, it's the end of my day. The uh, host <laughs> eight knot that you have, if I go to, if I go to that interface, like I'm not going to be able to clean up my own data in that interface. Um, yeah, no, you wouldn't be able yeah. to do it in that interface, but if there's, and that's, we kind of set up eight knot in the way that it's like, okay, if you have specific use cases or trying to integrate different data, you can go and, and fork that and have your own instance of it to be able yeah. to have those um, like customizations. Yeah, fair enough. Um, would you, um, what is it that you, manip what's the manipulation that you want to be able to do? Like, so Augur's eliminated duplicate users as a possibility um, from a platform perspective, but what other kind of, I mean, what other kind of manipulation do you want to do? Uh, mostly, mostly organizational affiliation. Yeah. And I, I would think that would be on the Augur side, not on the eight knot side that we would want to allow data manipulation since eight knot is more of a data science tool and yeah. Augur does let you manipulate some things already in the database, like with login. So, um, I don't know if I fully issue. agree with that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I cool. Because I mean, there's some. I think there's sometimes that like PR is like like an example of like if you're looking at like PR data and commits data, and it's you're combining a bunch of different types of activity. Like the data isn't incorrect. There's nothing wrong with the data itself. It is the way that you're trying to apply it to different situations, and so it's the using that data and like kind of like figuring out how to cater it to the question or the visualization that you're trying to answer. And so maybe it is like, I would say an example that we've run into is that, okay, we have information from the GitHub repositories itself. We can use, like if we're looking at company affiliation, we can use domains to get part of the way there, but we can start at, in Red Hat, there is like an internal like directory where some people have put their GitHub IDs. So we can use emails and we can use the information that we have in the directory and combine that to get a better view of the contributions within Red Hat. And so that's not something that personally, I feel like it's a lot easier for me. I can do it in a couple of lines of code to integrate those two things together versus putting it directly into our Augur instance. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense, especially if you're using a, a tool and you obviously don't wanna share that internal list of affiliations. You would, you would not want that included in something like Augur. You would just include that as a data source. Is that what you're saying? Did I get disconnected? No, no, no. no I just said yes. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. I didn't. Where, um, so I don't, I don't want to get too, like, like. Detailed into it, yeah. Yeah, my that's one thing that we can do um but i'm curious what what other people what other people think like i don't want to go too far down that the organizational affiliation rabbit hole because it is indeed one i've got a weird one 
Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Um, I, I'm in a car, so I apologize for the background noise. Um, something that I've been thinking about a lot is that when we create these visualizations, they are either default public or default accessible by those that have the login. Um, and so maybe this isn't exactly a metrics visualization problem. It's more of can we essentially extend visibility to something, but in an anonymous fashion, say if you didn't want to show your leaderboard to the entire public, but you wanted to show some statistics about your community. Um, like I, I talked about it with the Grimoire Labs team about how we could release an anonymized version of our dashboards because that could get around some of the privacy concerns. Um, but we haven't really been able to do that easily in terms of saying taking a fully identifiable visualization and then be able to have an anonymous version that you can mirror from it. Um, and so it's just kind of a, curious if anyone else has thought about that as well in terms of how to say increase access to the data without also doing it at the compromise of less privacy of those individuals. One thing that we're trying to do, we're starting from a generic perspective. So everything is by default anonymized. And we're trying to build our ecosystem of visualizations around that generic perspective. Um, so we, we don't assume that something is going to be unanonymized by default. Um, we just have user accounts that restricts specific individual identification, or at least that's something that we're implementing. Um, and we don't have a super good answer for, um, for merging those two perspectives yet but it's an act it's, it's something that we're actively working on and we're hoping that by enriching the like the visualization portfolio based on anonymized data it is more interesting than if we anonymize something built for the purposes of unanonymized visualization i i would add to that that what a lot of times what we're doing is putting instead of putting the actual like information that they like whether it be login email or whatever that might be putting in the contributor ids that we have from um auger which are pretty much just hashes and so but allowing it to say okay if you want to like host this locally and be able to see that information that it's pretty much just one line of code that you switch out we have it commented where one in what we actually publicize and what's on the public auger instance is a random number, large number. And then if you change one comment, then that is the login. But we're not going to make the logins public, but allow people to do that at in a private instance or their locally hosted instance of 8.9. I, mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's just more, it's still like, two different things versus being able to use the same instance to be able to do both. And it sounds like that's increased, it's difficult to do. So I was just curious. I'm, I'm glad I'm interested to hear how you're thinking about it. So thanks for sharing that. I mean, it's a, it's a somewhat the extension of persisting the map in a database versus persisting the map locally, I think. So it's like how you would use a, it's like the data collection tool. You can either store it there or you can, and I think it's the case has been made to store it in the data science tool but that has more flexibility and more respect for privacy ultimately. Other thoughts from other people? I had a comment. I don't think it'll take us down a technical discussion, but uh, that's okay. Yes. One of the things that I hear in um, the OSPO working groups is visualizations that enable people to understand the communities that they have an interest in, of course. And the other is a set of visuals that allow them to speak to sea level or management and they might be different sets of visualizations. So I'm not sure how to differentiate those or how we would think about those, but that is something that I definitely hear. 
Um, and I think it would also help the process of one of the concerns out of OSPOS is how do I communicate what it is that I see in these dashboards? Like, what do I do with it? And how do I make data-driven decisions from it? And so dashboards that could kind of help that process a little bit would be great. I don't, again, I don't know what those might be. Um, and then my second comment was, Sean, you had alluded to metrics models and maybe mm -hmm. it's tied to this. I do mm -hmm. think in chaos, we're in a position to potentially provide metric models that help kind of guide the conversation. And the reason that I say this is because in our DEI work, we have say event badging programs that are not the visuals that you're talking about, Callie, but like we have event badging programs where we're saying as an event organizer, we recommend that you attend to these particular six metrics or we're deploying a DEI.MD file for projects. This is part of our project badging. And again, we say here are four metrics that are important for you to think about DEI within your project. And so in the, both of those cases, we in the Chaos Project have had a lot of um, a lot of input as to what those metrics should be and how people should think about them. And so with metrics models, I think we're in a similar position to really help guide that conversation as well, whatever that conversation might be. So that's it for me. Others, Elizabeth, I'm curious about your perspective, given, you know, given that you manage the, the chaos community, are there, are there things that would help you understand what's going on in the community or where we can improve or something like that, that you, you don't already have? I think the questions that I like to answer are not available in data. So I'm mostly concerned about experience and whether or not folks can find their way here. And if we are offering multiple ways to contribute, which uh, a lot of my, um, I guess a lot of my feelings are just that, <laughs> just like the, the sentiment that I get from talking to people in the community and reaching out, but there's no, like I don't get reports. The only time I run any kind of data, honestly, are for the board meetings. And they're usually like, how many people do we have in Slack? Maybe how many Twitter followers? Like anything that I can grab a number on that kind of represents by proxy our community. But um, I don't work towards that number. So I'm not like, oh, we got to have 10,000 people in our Slack by Wednesday. Like, no, that's not how we work. So we're much more organic here. And it's, I think, from my perspective anyway, much more focused around experience and um, contributions and uh giving people the information that they need so that they can do what they want to do here whether it be contribute whether it be use metrics whether it be um listen in or learn or whatever their goals are if that makes sense I but i know that i would say from a, oh, oh sorry go ahead. i was gonna say more of a focus on like like storytelling than um than data? I would say that's that's accurate. Yeah. I, you know, and I have worked in companies before where those data points were very central and, and also the goals. Um, and I'm, <laughs> I don't know, we're being recorded, so I probably shouldn't say this, but I am glad that we are not that way here because I think that focusing on those kinds of metrics can also be harmful if they're not done in a good way. So I'm really glad that we are focused more on that kind of storytelling and experience and things that aren't necessarily just a number. So I'm, I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> it's a good soapbox. I've also found with like, no matter how much context, no matter how much yeah, no matter how much context you put to any of the visualizations that you've made, at least from my experience, it almost takes a few rounds for each person that you're trying to work with or entity that you're trying to work with to be able to interpret the data um, and actually be able to apply it almost. It's almost like you lean more and more that it's not just the tooling that you have to be able, like if we're saying from this perspective of being like, okay, we're data scientists working, trying to help people within Red Hat make decisions. Um, 
it's almost like the tool plus the like almost a consulting like helping people learn how to comprehend the data view it's the data like knowledge itself as well as the knowledge around open source and so i don't really have a full conclusion to this but it's more of i don't know it's like a i wouldn't I don't really know how I haven't come to a complete thought about this, but something that I it keeps on coming up of being like, okay, we're creating these tools, which is great, and I'm confident with the work that we're putting out. But how do you take it to the next step? And there might not be a next step, but it might just be that there is just some level of advising and consulting that is necessary anytime somebody starts looking at this data for the first time or these visualizations. And I will say too that um, focusing on trends is is helpful to support storytelling as well. Like if we look at the chaos community, we can see the trend in growth in, in chaos Africa, for instance, has been astronomical. So that you can interpret a few things from that, that it's a great community. There's a lot of welcoming folks. Um, people seem to enjoy it here because they've stuck around. We can also look at activity. So like using data to support the story, I think is totally fine. I think when the when the focus is the data itself, then then that's when it becomes an issue or can become an issue, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think the trends is is really helpful, and I do I I would look at those trends. I should I should have qualified that that I don't like totally discount all the data because that mm -hmm. be a little ironic, I guess. But um, but yeah, I think looking at the trends is is a good way to incorporate that into the storytelling and to just kind of validate what you're feeling and what you know you're anecdotally hearing from folks. So I think that's good. I think one of the things that we we struggle with a lot with some of these some of these tools is is balance and focus maybe because the problem is like these dashboards and these visualizations are used by lots and lots of different people right like the community manager wants to dig into every little detail about their community and is probably going to look at almost every single chart and draw conclusions about their community from it Whereas an OSPO lead probably wants to look at maybe three or four things and have those be easy to find and easy to interpret. Um, you know, this is this is one of the reasons that that at VMware I used I used Augur for kind of the scalable um, OSPO metrics because I could give everyone the four charts that I wanted them to look at for community health if they were like a maintainer, a manager, uh, you know, kind of the the random people that might look at data. But it's also why our community managers used Baturgia so that they could dig into every single detail about the communities that they managed. So they have these like big dashboards with all the things, which is what a community manager needs. But an individual maintainer or manager of a team might get overwhelmed by all of that, all of that data. So it's this, it's this balance between how do you provide people with all of the information that they need in a way that isn't overwhelming to some of the other users. James, you have your hand up. What you're describing is something that I, I've had, I've been trying to work through in terms of my approach to these problems. Because sometimes it seems like the work that Callie and I do on a day-to-day -day basis can feel like an answer in search of a question where you might ask why, how specifically would someone consume this artifact that I'm creating? And like you're describing, some people just need this, this very concentrated perspective on one or two axes that help inform decision making, while other people are like have a, a very similar but different faceted role where they need to understand really deep analytical things and micro trends. And what I came to was that a lot of what we do day to day is study open source community, even if it doesn't necessarily have a translational impact in the short run. The goal is that someone can come to this in the future and find a lot of value in a nuanced perspective. And it's that's helped me guide future work because my appreciation for maybe this doesn't immediately have an impact. Maybe it's something that's a little bit uh, like a, 
a little bit more of a nuanced pattern of analysis that I wouldn't necessarily expect someone to derive value from immediately by looking at it. Like the next person to look at the site isn't going to find it thrilling. Or maybe they will. Like I can't necessarily expect that. But there's going to be some personas that will consume it and find a lot of value in that. So having it be almost pure science, pure study, I think is really valuable because people will inevitably find some kind of deeper understanding from it, I hope. That's at least the, the thing that guides what I am interested in looking at at a given time. Yeah, Eric, I'm curious what your perspective is on this. Because you've talked to lots of people that have used the Grimoire Lab for Turgia tools. I'm also only half listening. What, what is this? Oh. <laughs> the, the, sorry, the specific topic is kind of the, the overwhelmingness of, of dashboards and how you provide the right visualizations to the right audience and how do you like where do you draw that balance between just like wall of data and um getting people to those interesting insights that they need to get to regardless of who they are and what their what their focus is the approach we take is one working with our customers on what they actually need to solve going through the goal question metric approach, um, agreeing on a few metrics, three or four, that we put on a dashboard when they're customized. The dashboards are organized around different perspectives on the community. So we have dashboards that are looking at, okay, what's happening in GitHub? What is happening in Slack? What is happening in discourse. Uh, we have dashboards that are focused on the community. So who is coming, leaving. We have dashboards organized around activity, um, finding bottlenecks, analyzing the, the, the analyzing where the bottlenecks are, how the work is being done. And so each dashboard has its own focus. And then if we want to analyze something else, that's when we create a new dashboard or point someone to a different dashboard. Cool. Thanks. We do have another agenda item about metrics models, but uh, let me give people just one more one more minute if you have any other points on the visualizations or any of the stuff we've talked about before we move on to the metrics models discussion. Okay. Um, so metrics models in in eight knot. I'm not sure who wants to lead this lead this discussion. I, I think that came up last time. I don't know. Kelly, James. I honestly think that it might be more for you to leave more because this has been something that you've yeah. brought up to me a few times yeah. of like the concept of metrics models. I have yeah. looked at them a decent amount and started to see how different pieces of some of the metrics models, how those visualizations would fit into eight knot but trying to think about how the metric models as a whole would. And also I'd be yeah. curious to know from these metrics models, like, and maybe it might be best to go into a singular example or something else of like, what, what are, well, how are you planning on users to be like, what is the goal of the metric models? Are people trying to make decisions about their own communities from these metric models? Is it something that you're supposed to be coming up with some type of conclusion about a community that you aren't necessarily, like, are you a, like as like a good user case of like a company trying to understand a community that they're not necessarily involved in yet? It's the trying to understand the goals of the metrics models and some perspective on that, you know, on that question would be is that like, even with the most simple visualizations that we make, 
a lot of times you have to provide a lot of context and trying to help people understand and interpret them, that a lot of these metrics models are a lot more complicated and layered and there's some more prediction in them of being like, okay, how realistically, like how are you, what are users going to get from them? And like, how are we going to be able to equip them to be, yeah, for them to be able to Con use them? Conceptually, I think they're, they kind of arise out of things that other OSPOs have done to give people a particular perspective. So getting back to what James talked about with the context and solving problems that different questions that different types of people have and Don's earlier point about where you look for detailed information or like large scale information. So I think I think the metrics models can be, and this is where I think from a like a maintenance perspective or uh, from a data scientific perspective, there's going to be so many different metrics models that people will need a way to choose from among them uh, to get the view or perspective that they're looking for. And when Georg was talking about you know, they create a new dashboard for a customer based on that customer need. I think what the metrics models are trying to do is bring some of the, the customer needs, not Turgia's customers, but customers of chaos metrics in general. Um, the collect, I guess I would characterize the metric model as kind of a piece of collective knowledge that has evolved in the chaos community. And then when it's implemented in a tool, then it becomes an easily accessible perspective now giving people ways to browse that and make sure they understand what they're looking at, that that is another challenge at any time you're presenting data. And I think to add to that, that I think a lot of the metrics models, just to add on to what Sean said, a lot, a lot of the metrics models are really designed to, um, to pull a few things together so that you can understand the bigger story. So the idea behind, you know, a lot of dashboards, you've, you've got lots and lots of stuff on them, um, but you can, you can collect things together in ways that you can gain deeper insights about, about something. So you can, you can look at, you know, maybe there are six metrics that are all part of uh, understanding some particular component of your community. And by looking at all of them together, you know, one of the things that Compass has done with a lot of the metrics models is come up with a score um, for for something to help you see, you know, whether um, I don't know whether something's improving or not based on based on looking at all of these together and giving it some kind of a collective um, visualization. So sometimes for some of them, I, I don't have Compass uh, loaded here handy, but um, they have like one graph that represents the, you know, multiple metrics under underneath it so that you can kind of see what it looks like at a glance. And then you can dig into some of those, some of those other, other models. I don't think I'm explaining that very, very well. You did. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I feel like I, and that's probably, I think that's the, mo the most informative way of doing any of these metrics and trying to figure out how to group them together. I guess, and I think that I'm a little bit, maybe a tad too hung up on the like, okay, we can group these things together. How do we provide this in a way that is interpretable? Maybe I kind of just want to throw that to a, to the side and looking at, okay, what metrics models maybe do we want to focus on? Which one can, might be a good one to start with, or what are the limitations so far with hosting or providing these metric models at this point? I mean, the limit, limitations I think are probably interface design for something like eight knot. Um, make you know if you've got twenty metric models, how do you help people choose them without overwhelming them? With twenty dashboards. It's the first thing yeah. I think of. It would be great if there's a way to directly tie a dashboard to values for the company, or. Mm -hmm some kind of like higher level so like for instance at, at chaos like diversity equity inclusion is a huge focus for us so yeah I, I care about contributions and how many but i also care about where those contributions are coming from and if they're all coming from you know like silicon valley that's not good even if we have an increase so i would want to layer those two things together like give me a map or give me something that tells me that i'm getting contributions from a variety of places and a variety of people and that speaks to the values that we care about. 
Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know how to do that in a data sort of way, but um, that might be a way, if, if there is a way to tie those things directly to data, I think would be helpful. I think that that's definitely possible in the sense that you can start to look at a lot of times you can see the time zone ever just thinking um, off the bat of like looking at the time zones of where the contributions that are happening and you could have different types of I don't know if people have seen like the maps where it has like different sized and colored bubbles and so that would be different like areas with higher amounts of activities maybe the bubbles are the type of actions the only limitation of that is maybe saying only showing it for specific countries and or time zones um, because there can be there there can be some debate of whether it is a good thing to visualize contributions that would potentially force a project to exclude or kick out I don't know if it's the right term certain contributors that are in countries that are have any type of like embargo or I don't know the correct terms for all of this, but pretty much any way that would make it to where you'd have to exclude somebody who would like to be about a part of your contribution or a part of your community, because you don't have the responsibility of searching out that information and knowing for sure that those people from certain countries aren't contributing. But if you know it, then you have the responsibility to remove. The time zones wouldn't exactly, you'd be able to map by time zone, but you wouldn't be able to map by any like specific beyond that, unless a contributor for GitHub data, for example, puts their um, like location in their GitHub profile. Some people do, but I'd say the vast majority don't. And this is where it becomes tricky for chaos, because a lot of, <laughs> again, yeah. a lot of the things we care about are not available or the data's kind of sketch, you know, like we can... Yes. Demographic data, things like that is like, eh, yeah, it's a little rough. So um, it's tricky. Um, do you want me to stop sharing so you can show the compass screen, Matt? Yeah, it'll just take two seconds. Yeah, sure. In two seconds, but um, so this is what Don was kind of pointing out. So each one of these over here would essentially be a metric model. And so, and the chaos logo indicates it's a published chaos metric model. And so to, to Don's point, this top one is all of the four metric models just kind of seen at a in, in one collective view. And then this particular metric model, collaboration development index, you can, this is the collective that Don was point, talking about. So this is the overall view. And as an example, you could see it fairly, something that might be interesting to you. And then down below, you could take a look more specifically at the metrics that are used to construct this, this single view. So that's what a, a metric model would provide here. And then as you scroll down, you get to the next model. And again, also kind of referring to what Elizabeth had talked about, just trends over time. Might, you know, you might look at something and say, super interesting. Let me let me just look a little bit further. Um, and we do actually have the um the way they calculate this as well. So we could provide that um as well. So hopefully that's helpful. Other thoughts on the metrics models? Yeah. Um, so we've reached the end of our agenda. We have a few more minutes. Um, are there some things that we want to talk about for the next meeting? Other agenda items that we want to add? I think we'll need a facilitator because you won't be here. Is that right, Don? Oh, no, I'll be here. I come back on the 12th and this meeting oh, will be yeah. on the 13th. Brilliantly okay. scheduled vacation. Yeah, I'm only I'm only really out for about a week. Um, okay. 
to be honest. Uh, I'll, I'll be back on Tuesday and then I'll work the, the rest of that week. All good. So it was the OSPO one that I needed you to cover because that's on the other yeah. No other problem. <laughs> I, just, I just had two weeks in my mind for both of you. Elizabeth. <laughs> Anything people wanna people wanna put on the agenda for the next meeting? Other topics we want to talk about? Um, also, this doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, I don't know. It doesn't have to be like laser focused on our our tools and visualizations. We can talk about other stuff too. So I know you know Sophia, you occasionally do interesting interesting research and presentations at conferences about some of the stuff that you you've learned. Um, not to put Sophia on the spot, but you know, anybody, like if there's some interesting analysis that you've done, um, either using the chaos tools or not, but um, you know, just to kind of showcase what we can what we can learn about open source projects from from some of the the research that people have done, that would also be useful, I think, in this working group. Could I invite uh, Scoutflow? They recently reached out to me to show. I mean, their plans for adding community health metrics, project metrics to their platform, which is uh, their platform is uh, inventory of open source alternatives to commercial services and trying to make it easier for companies to adopt open source uh, solutions versus proprietary solutions. And they want to add the project health metrics, uh, security risk metrics, and so on. Um, and they started to think about a model. And it looks like they've already thought through a lot there. They've played with Grimoire Lab. I told them that Augur might be better for the scale and the kind of analysis that they want to do. Um, but they're in the early stages. So my question is, is this a good meeting to invite them to, to talk about their plans? and get feedback. I'd, I'd be open to that. Yeah, I'm sure. totally open to that. Yeah. It's always interesting to see how other people are approaching some of this as well. I think we can learn a lot from, from that as well as providing feedback from, from them. Um, so do you mind reaching out to them and seeing if they're available for the next meeting time? And if not, maybe um, the one after? Yeah, I will do that. Who is it? Oh. Uh, this is Scoutflow. Okay, that was all I was wondering. Sorry, uh, Sylvia. That's okay. Um, I guess I have an, an idea for another topic. Um, it's kind of something that I do work on a lot is trying to understand what a baseline should be in a project or population. Um, and I feel like sometimes it takes a couple of rounds of analysis to really figure out what that is and what it should be. Um, I'd be curious to know how others are approaching this. Um, and so I guess it's sort of like, especially if you're doing any sort of analysis, you gotta know what your baseline is. That's sort of the most basic thing to understand, but sometimes that can be harder to derive depending on the age, the size, the whatever it is that you're looking at, whether or not it's a project, a community, an ecosystem, or a company. Um, and so I'd be, I'm happy to share some stories, but also be happy to see how others in this group are pursuing that. Yeah, that would be really interesting. I would love that. Anything else we want to talk about for next week? Feels like these two would be some a couple of pretty yeah pretty like good topics. Substantial, yeah, substantial conversation. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, this is great. I feel like we, I feel like we got a lot, uh, a lot done. I feel like we had good conversations. So thank you everybody for you for coming, and we'll see you again in two weeks. If I don't see you in other chaos meetings, two, two weeks. Well, you won't be out. For a while. I will be Very here. Will oh, you'll be, be here tomorrow. No, I'll you'll be, be here. here. Oh, right, that's true. Okay, very okay. I come back. I come back on the twelfth. I'm thinking I'm not more broadly. Some We're two talking weeks, about this like meeting. some other people. Yeah. I feel like I just uh, took July off. I don't I don't necessarily need a ton of time. I just need some beach time. Yeah.
I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Go for it. I mean, people already assume you're taking off, Don. So I'm just saying. I know yeah. people just think I'm just gonna take weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> Nice. Little eleven days, eleven days, two weekends and uh, a week. Right. It's all good. All right. Well, enjoy peeing right. in your bathroom, Elizabeth. And enjoy. Your- yes, it will be fun. <laughs> See y'all. Bye. 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 All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.